Hey, Tom here. Welcome to my channel, Tom Loves DIY. And today I'm making a short version of the four part series I did on how to make a combination down and synthetic sleeping bag from a packable down throw. I use Double Black Diamond and Blue Ridge Active. I think they're the same bag, probably come off the same Chinese assembly line. Both one pound, 60 by 70, seems to be the same fabric, and the down on both of them is listed at 700 fill power, which is pretty darn good. The four part series is kind of long, so I'm going to condense it down, do a quick version for those of you who either don't want to spend the time or don't need that much detail that's in the four part series. So stick around and I'll be showing you how to make a new one, doing it for a buddy of mine. It's got a few differences, from this bag that I made and showed you in the first four part video. And I think you'll be interested in some of the changes. Thanks for watching. The 60 by 70 has stitches about every four inches making squares. You need to remove most of them. The 70 inch long stitches need to be pulled out except for the one in the center. And when you've completed that, hold on to it like this shape the down so that it moves to the outside edges. That way you'll end up with the baffles that you're going to create. And the next thing after that, pin it. Go from that one center seam that you left intact, 13 inches, run a line of pins down the entire length. Then stitch it one inch inside of those pins for a 12 inch wide seam from one end to the other and backstitch the ends. Repeat that on the other side. I've cut a 48 and a half inch by 70 inch piece of the climber shield. See it's folded over here and inside is the piece of emergency blanket that will add to the insulation on the bottom side. This shiny side up will be laying on this side. I'm going to tack stitch this in, oh, maybe three or four inch long stitches, nice and loose, but just enough to hold everything together so that it can be slid into the sleeping bag from the end and not come apart and bunch up. That'll be next. I have stitched around the perimeter of the Climber Shield sandwich with some wide, loose stitches using polyester thread, no cotton thread and also in three places across the center to hold it in place so that when I stuff it into the sleeping bag baffle that I've emptied of down, this will not come apart and bunch up. It's still a little tricky. I'm going to get that started. I've inserted the climber shield in the 24-inch uh, wide opening and made sure that it went all the way out to the edges and then pinned it all along both sides and on both ends. You can see there's a little bit of uh, excess because I cut this a little bit long. And the next step is to stitch the length of the sides about one inch in from the existing seam that we put in when we created these down baffles. Get to that. Because the person I'm making this bag for is a bit taller than I am, he needs a little extra length. So I've cut a piece of 12 inch by 60 inch fabric and about a 26 inch piece of reflective material. And I've got the climber shield. This will all be put together like this, stitched up and attached on the bottom of the bag. That will give them an extra five inches or so of length and make him a little more comfortable. Hey, I've added about a five inch piece on the bottom uh, where the foot box will be connected and that will wrap around like so. And the climber shield you can see is inside. There's two layers. Also in the middle is a length about 26 inches so that it'll extend beyond where the climber shield is in the rest of the bag and a little bit toward the down section and that will be stitched in a little bit here. You might remember the first bag I made had a single baffle on this side and the zipper on this side was attached directly to the bag. That gave me about a four inch extra room here for the torso which was pretty comfortable but 
The guy I'm making this bag for is a little claustrophobic, and so I'm going to put a much wider addition in the center, about 9 or 10 inches. That would be difficult to do with one baffle, so I'm doing two. There'll be one on each side, center is where the zipper will join them together, and they'll overlap a little bit. I have two pieces of fabric. This is the first one. It's about 16 inches wide and much longer than needed. I'm going to fold this over, stitch it up, and get it ready to add to the bag. If you've been following along, you'll remember that I've decided to make this uh, extra wide in the torso to help my claustrophobic friend be comfortable in the bag. So to do that, rather than one baffle, I've made two. One for each side with the zipper running basically up the center. They're all put together. The zipper is attached on one side. The other side is not stitched on yet. Because Next attach it to the bag, put on some more Velcros, and put in the climate shield. Then we have to do the foot box and the hood. Thanks. Hey, made some good progress. I've added Velcro to the baffles so that when the top one overlaps the other and the uh, zipper is there, there'll be a piece underneath that and this will help keep it in place. I've also stitched along the edge so that the baffle will extend underneath the edge of the uh, quilt. Did that on both sides, about three quarters of an inch. And I've constructed the two fillers for the baffle. Two layers of climate shield with the emergency blanket in between. You can see it's sticking out. I'll trim all that off before I stitch it up. These are also, as usual, held in place with some loose basting stitches so that they go in and stay in place and don't bunch up. That also holds the emergency blanket chunk in place so that uh, it's not going to move around as well. This is the foot box panel. It's made from a 22 by 12 piece, doubled, it's a bag obviously, stitched together inside out. I rolled the seams made sure that they would be on the inside when I turn it right side out. It's got two layers of climber shield and I've stitched each corner and in the middle of each side. That will hold it in place. Don't want it moving around. It's going to be vertical mostly so I wanted to make sure that it would be in a stable location there. This will get stitched into the bottom of the bag. I finished stitching. The baffles in place. It baffles taper down to zero here below the zipper. The zipper ends here and then these taper down very quickly. I've also stitched together the bag itself and I like to put these uh, string filled seams on the outside stitch down and that way it's smoother on the inside. I've also closed the extension that I put in and I noticed that I, I missed a spot here that's easy to fix. I'll just turn that over and uh, stitch it down. Then the next thing is to install this foot box baffle that I've made. It's about 21 by 11. That'll give me enough room for seams along the outside when I stitch it in and make a nice snug foot box on the bottom. I'll do that with the bag inside out. So again, all of the seams are smooth on the outside. Makes it look a little nicer, I think. Foot box is sewn in and I'm working on the hood, which is basically just a crescent of material filled with climber shield. And it will be attached here and I've got a couple of uh, shoelaces that will be fed through here to make a drawstring. Almost done. Completed the hood, stitched it on. You can see that it's just kind of a crescent shape. 
and there's a channel here at the top and I put in shoelace, nice flat uh, polyester one, it slides great and added one of these uh, buckly things, I don't know what they're called speed locks so that you can draw it up tight and then pull this in and hold it in place. It's done. Thanks for watching. Hey, a uh, bit of a recap. Bag is done. It's actually been used. My buddy and I spent an overnight. Um, got a little chilly. This bag is probably good to about 45 degrees if you've got a good insulated pad and you wear your proper base layers, but it got down to about 40. And so he ended up wearing a puffer jacket inside along with the rest of the clothes. Um, not uncomfortable, but could have been a little warmer. So I'm going to call this a 45 degree bag. It has a couple of features different from my first bag. There's a double baffle in the front. It's got a Velcro. This comes down. And underneath the zipper is an extra piece that sticks out so that it goes under and there are some velcros that hold it in place that way there's not a cold spot under the zipper it has a big hood larger than the one before and it also has double layer of climber shield i think if i were to do this again i'd do a triple layer of climber shield in here along with a little of the emergency blanket this has a 48 inch zipper comes down to the bottom um, might want to epoxy or stitch this shut so that when you zip down it doesn't come apart. I've also added the extra five inches on the bottom. This dark panel here is an add-on with a double layer of climber shield. And again, I think I would go with a triple layer of climber shield so that it's a little bit closer to the down. Overall, exactly two pounds. Not too bad for a bag that cost about $80 in materials and compresses down to about the size of a soccer ball. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think I'll be making another one. It's a lot of work, but it was fun doing it, and I hope you have enjoyed watching, and give it a try. Thanks.